The liturgy today, for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, I mean, seems to speak a lot about fruit. Both in the epistle and gospel there is reference to it. And I want to speak about that a little bit too. The fruits of your spiritual life. In the light of today's gospel, I want to examine today a modern day piety. I think that's a good term for it. Modern piety versus true piety. It is true that today there are very generous souls out there who give themselves over entirely to the service of God and the salvation of souls, though they are few and they are rare to come by. But it is also true that there is an atmosphere of piety, so-called piety, that has grown up in the last few decades which we need to examine in order that we might know its defects and its pitfalls so as to avoid them for the future and to apply the the much-needed remedies for this modern false piety. You see, nowadays, the faithful, for the most part, are in the habit of making frequent holy communions. And centuries ago, you might receive once a month or less, more if you had the permission of a confessor, but it was almost unheard of to receive holy communion once a week, let alone once every day, as so many people are inclined to do now. But it was the permission given by Pope Pius XII to the priests to offer an evening Mass. That was never permitted before Pius XII. And as well as the shortening of the communion fast, from fasting from midnight until Holy Communion to what we observe now, the three-hour fast before Holy Communion. Those two things made it possible for us to go to more frequent Holy Communions. And many are in the habit of going to extra Masses whenever possible. And uh, you, I'm sure, recite your daily rosary with the family and have spiritual reading and all of your other devotions throughout the day. All of this is very pious and highly recommendable. Yet despite all of this, all of this piety, it seems that the world and even many otherwise good Catholics drift further and further from Almighty God, almost imperceptibly, too. If you're not really watching yourself, that's how it happens. And our charity grows cold in spite of all the devotions that we have filled our life with. Now, how can this be explained? I mean, piety on the one hand, and yet our souls growing cold on the other, by the simple fact that there is less true piety in our devotions than we would imagine. In many, piety is merely an external. I think that's true for for most of us. It's not a conscious thing. It's it's all subconscious, I think, for, for most of us. But it is just that. It's an external. When we kneel down to say our rosary at night, it's just another duty that has to be done. Or when we do our morning and night prayers, we offer our Lord lip service. But our hearts aren't really into these things when we really admit it. Or our sacred heart devotions and what have you. Our hearts are not really in it. It's external. It's extra for our life. Many will recite prayer after prayer, which can be a good thing, But that's not everything. Prayer for the sake of prayer is not what we're after here. And Our Father, just to say that we've recited in Our Father and done our duty, it might do some good, but it's not going to accomplish all that it should. Again, we serve God with our lips, but our heart is far from it. That is, our devotion to God's will is lacking. And that is what all of our piety and devotion should lead to. That is, to the fulfillment of God's will, to the acceptance of Almighty God's will 
in all things. If our devotions aren't leading to that, then they're empty and we're doing something wrong. Well, how can we recognize the signs of this modern piety, this false piety? First, it shows its sign, it shows signs of this very little sorrow for sin. And this is often coupled with a great love of material pleasures. This is this oftentimes happens. We'll say our prayers, we'll even come to Mass every Sunday, but then we go back to the world on Monday and all of its material pleasures. We forget the fact that the world is an enemy of Christ. This is totally forgotten. And so we compromise. Once we forget that principle, our whole life is filled with compromise. And we become, as it were, hypocrites. Because we do, our, we do our external pieties and devotions, and then we live as any other worldly. Maybe perhaps not a life of mortal sin, but we're just a bit too worldly-minded. The fact that the world is an enemy of Christ is forgotten. Our Lord said once, I have come not to bring peace, but the sword. We are not to find peace through compromise with the world, because the world and all that it holds out to us is an enemy of Christ, and it is therefore our own soul's mortal enemy. If we open our hands to it and we, we compromise on principles of faith and of morals, then it will bring death to the soul ultimately. A Catholic can never compromise, be it in his recreations, be it in his dress code, or the television entertainment and the internet, or the public schools, or, dare I say this, faith, the SSPX. You see, there are many people out there who get the idea, as long as it's a Latin mass, that's all that matters. This is a false piety. The love, they say they love the mass. In reality, they have compromised the faith because they're going to a mass now that is offered essentially outside the church in union with Vatican II and in union with a false pope. For piety, they have compromised principles of faith. At times, too, modern piety reaches a stage when all of these works of piety and devotion are used as a screen to cover up a life of sensualism and materialism. Piety becomes, I heard it put this way once, a sort of an insurance policy against death. You see it very often. Well, I've, I wear my scapular every day, and our, I trust in Our Lady's promise, and, oh, she'll forgive me if I do such and such. That is a piety which is not producing fruit. Your will must be in your devotions, and your devotions must lead to the fulfillment of God's will. Then there are the works of piety that we combine with our careless reading, occasions of sin that we just don't want to give up, or the faulty education of children. No, remember, all of our devotions, they must be done with this end in mind, that they lead us to the fulfillment of God's will. If they're not doing it, they're not, your devotion is not correct. And then, furthermore, if when we do our devotions, we're neglecting mortification, then our piety is weak. Because again, what is it in us that keeps us from God, that keeps us from growing in holiness, if not our fallen human nature. You see, it's always like a, a compass that's going off, off its course. You always have to bring it back to center. That's constantly what the spiritual life is to do. We go off course, we commit our sins, we have to bring it back on course by mortification. If we're not mortifying our evil tendencies, and I'm not speaking about giving up candy and chocolate, those are good mortifications, 
and a start, but I mean the essential mortifications, mortifying your predominant passion, mortifying your anger and your lust and your sloth, mortifying the things that keep you back from giving yourself entirely to God. You must couple penance with piety. Modern piety is furthermore filled with superficiality. That is, we never look farther than the surface. We never look deep into the soul. That's an uncomfortable place to be for, for not just some of us, but for all of us, even for the most holy among us. It's an uncomfortable place to find ourselves, looking deep within our souls and finding all the little nasty things that you'll see there. So many attachments, so many sins, so many imperfections and faults. We say our vocal prayers and then move on. But no, our devotions are to be more than superficial. They are to penetrate into the depths of our soul to help us find our faults and our sins. And here it is again, do the will of God. Overcome these faults. That is what our devotions must lead to. And lastly, true devotion is often confused with sentimentalism. This is a very popular thing. It happens to all of us at one time or another. We're not experiencing consolation in prayer if we don't feel the desire to pray and to do good works. Then we, we think that something's wrong. These emotions and these sensible consolations, remember, are given not as an end in itself, but they are given as a means to an end. God gives them to us in the beginning of our spiritual life in order to, to give us incentive to pray to him more and more and to do all sorts of good works for him. And then eventually he takes them away because he wants us to serve him for his own sake and not serve him for his consolations. Don't get confused. Feeling and sentiment is not piety. It may be an effect of piety at times, but it's not what you're after. If piety is based on emotion, then just as emotions change, so will you also give up your piety. And you will go in fits and starts and uh, all of the rest. Our Lord said, The branch that yields no fruit in me, he, the Father, cuts away. The branch that does yield fruit, he trims clean so that it may yield more fruit. The fruit of true piety is this. It is growth in virtue. It is growth in the living out of our faith. That is what it's all about. All of our devotions must lead to that. It is to conform our wills with the will of God. If you are doing this, if you notice this is the effect of your devotions, then continue with them. By all means, continue and do even more. But if you notice that your devotions are not leading you to search out the will of God, to accept it, and to conform your will to His, then examine yourself on those points. Am I basing all my piety on feeling? Am I cloaking, using it as a cloak? Or what have you? Do that today, won't you? A little examination. That means going deep into the soul, a nasty place to go, and find out if your devotions are having this effect. And this is the fruit that our Lord wants of all of us today, speaking of fruit, the fruit of good works the fruit of serving God and conforming our will to his in all things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.